Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. It's another another live show. And so I'm excited to get started here painting hair and fur. We're going to segue into fur because there just wasn't enough time last week. I got my little earbuds in so that I can hear my brother Ben on on the line. What's hey, up, ben. everybody? Good to see you out Not there easy. again. We're going to paint some fur today. Feeling furry. That's it. He's making sure that uh, all of your important comments questions whatever if you want to heckle us and be a troll you can do that too <laughs> we're up for whatever kind of fun so uh ben's ben's gonna be uh watching that making sure it gets through while i'm painting so we left off and we were uh doing i i realized after we stopped we were doing a lot of dark hair so i'm gonna scoot back we got brian over here operating the camera so it's his fault if you can't see what i'm painting over here just say brian come on give us a better look no he he comes uh he's very gracious he comes he volunteers his time and uh yeah go ahead and flip us over to the other camera there and uh so i'm very thankful for ben and brian the guys that make this possible this is our last this is our last show from this studio we have to we have to move out and so I'll be re relocating. So I'm not sure about the, the date of the next show. So all I'm doing here is taking the beard. Do, if, if you watched last, this is a very strange way to start this video. You're like, what in the world are we looking at? <laughs> so if you watched last week, then perhaps you remember that we put a lot of different, a lot of different hairstyles on this character. And so then then we gave her a beard and that was just for the sake of doing a beard and so now i'm wanting to put a different color hair on to demonstrate you know moving into light colored hair and then the light colored hair you know that happens to be you know a lot a lot of furry creatures kind of have that more blonde color so i think that'll be a good opportunity to move into that next how are we looking you know, at you know we're talking about we're talking about painter's rut this morning in the chat box which is oh okay very it, good yeah which is interesting because yeah uh you know oftentimes we don't feel so inspired yeah absolutely i relate to that completely what yes, uh, you know, what do you what do you do when you're in a painter's rut uh you know i i a lot of times i just mope you know let's let's be honest <laughs> It takes me a while. And then uh, by the grace of God, some job comes along that uh, says, Joe, we need you to do this. And then, you know, what really helped me uh, was having jobs to do. When people needed something done, it suddenly became a lot more meaningful for me. It was the energy I needed uh, to get get a project finished you know and getting projects finished is how you get out of a painter's rut in, in my opinion it is, that's the one thing that needs to happen so there was a time i i should share that there was a time when i was i'm just going to make some colors off to the side here's something i do a lot is mix on the side i uh, i was working on a painting for a friend i way underpriced it it was my fault completely not his and i turned it into a big detail job and i got bogged down i couldn't finish it life life was happening and i was still stuck on yesterday's project and uh, it was a, a major discouragement not only because it was happening but because it was happening for the hundredth time and you know and i'm thinking oh you did it again joe you know this is what you do and so i decided I'm going to handle this the same way I handle getting myself addicted to coffee. I'm going to commit to a tiny bit every day, even if it's just a couple brush strokes. And so that pattern rescued me. So when you're in the painter's rut, you know, that, that old, uh, what's that? What's that? Old, it's a, maybe it's a country song. Maybe it's an old saying when you're going through hell, just keep on going. You I know. think that's, if it's not a country song, it's about to be. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't make that. You know, that that uh, that saying really rings true for that. You know, I didn't have the option of not being in the situation. 
but finding a way to put one foot in front of the other was the eventual way out there it wasn't a pill it wasn't a fast cure you know it was just making a plan this is going to be my path out and it's going to be sucky for a while because i'm going to be doing you know little peanuts worth of progress on my picture but i can tell you a couple years later it did take me two years <laughs> took me two years to get that thing done uh actually it was probably only during the second year that i got into that rut and and realized that i was that i had really blown it and it got finished the good news it got finished it looked great it looked fantastic i i finally got out of the rut and you know when you're near the finish line your momentum picks up again and you're you you realize one day you're like hey this is almost over it's gonna happen it's gonna happen i'm gonna finish it does happen yeah we got a lot of ideas out there uh people going for jogs people uh oh good that's good advice uh you know just changing up your your thing do a different thing you know uh -huh, good which is, advice which good is advice. Good. Yeah, you know, you change your uh, your actions, and then your your feelings and your state of mind can follow. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I I I have told uh, I've told maybe my kids before. I said, uh, running up a hill can solve any problem in this world. <laughs> Let's run up hills. Whatever's wrong, just run up hills. <laughs> we live in we live in Flagstaff, Arizona. Running up hills is actually a popular pastime here. You know, because you are uh, gonna you, you're gonna put some fur on this person here, or what? Do you well, you know, I'm just warming myself up. You know, I'm having a hard day. I quit caffeine. Okay. Yeah, we were thinking like maybe this is gonna <clears throat> turn into a werewolf or something. Well, I want <laughs> we can we can, but let's give it let's give the character some blondish colored hair now okay there we go i just had to give it more of a believable form i didn't want to do it with that big curly dark beard <laughs> it wasn't going to make sense okay so what we didn't get into uh was was doing the lighter color so i think with hair it really is i'll, I'll talk about the colors as i go but uh, i'm just putting brown on here but uh it really is so much about the values. I, I think with hair, values makes meaning darkness and lightness. How dark and how light and, and having that very smooth flow of grain, you know, the direction of the hair, having the consistency really causes it to, to look like hair. And, and so the colors are probably the second priority they make a huge difference but if you're going to add color adding color badly of of course uh, is not good you know and and so i'm showing you how to manipulate the colors should you want to add the colors but you know uh, there's a way to draw hair very lifelike as well i was looking at pictures that of gray hair you know let's say you're, you're looking at some really gray hair and you know, you don't have a whole lot of color in there. There is. I'll show you what that color looks like. Because, you know, maybe you're doing a wolf or some animal that has grayish hair. Did you make that brown or is that a... This brown, I, I you know... Is that was, a primary brown, Joe? Is that this brown, brown was in a can that I got from Home Depot. It's just wall, cheap wall paint, a little sample thing. <laughs> it's not. It's not any special kind of brown. So I'm just letting the hair be whatever it's going to be. So brown is like a dark orange you know in in terms of in terms of like like if we were brown a dark yeah it's like a dark orange and so i want to move it toward yellow as it gets brighter so if i'm going to do that reflection in here if this was gray if it was black and white i wouldn't be too concerned about color changes but but with with the brown i uh, i could add a color that causes this not to look very believable so this is the pattern with the colors that you want to use is that as it gets brighter it moves toward the yellow just like most translucent things 
And so I'll first add some yellow in there. Now I'm ready to add some white. You could do this in any order. I'm not telling you the order to do it, but where the colors need to appear. So now I need to have consistent directional flow as well. That'll probably help. So let's go like this, like that. And then we're going to put some going down here. We kind of did the same, same hairstyle last time. So now we've got that bright reflection area. And the reason that that even resembles the reflection on, on this color hair is because it's moving from the brown to the yellow to the light color. So I want to, I want to be mindful of that and getting color in the shadows when I have a, a brighter color. And so now I'll go over here, put some yellow on that, but I don't want really yellow. I want a yellower shade, something that just is toward yellow. So I'm going to do that, mix it with brown, take white, put some of my bright, bright little highlights in there, like this, like that. Now we've got that part in the hair. My paint kind of dried, you know, I get a lot of questions about fast drying paint. Sometimes I just run out of time, just like anybody else. I just have to reapply. The nice thing about the fast drying paint is that you can just reapply it right over the dry paint. So you can see that I've got a very golden shade from the yellow and brown that I chose. I just grabbed them out of a pile because I actually left my usual pile of paints on a job site as I was coming over here to do the live stream. I was like, oh man, I left my paint. Showed up, showed up as the painter without paint. How do you like that? I mean, that's like next level absent-mindedness. Okay. You should have drinking coffee today. I should have had the coffee. Yes, Brian said it. Should have had the coffee. <laughs> Bad day to stop. Okay. So I'm just putting some of that same color. Let's try adding a little black. That may be fun. So change up the color a little bit as it goes down here. We'll go here, make some longer hair. So I want to work from my, we'll call this, we'll call this a mid-tone. You know, I'm adding a little bit of black to the brown now. So what happens if I add yellow to that? It might get too green, it might get greener than I want it to. Let's see. Let's go. If it does, that just means that I need to go a little bit more red on that color that moves it toward yellow. You know, it's just a matter of adjusting that highlight color a little bit, but it might not be too green. Let's see, let's give it a check. Okay, that does look a little green, I don't know. Okay, now white. By the way, the paints I'm using, I've got uh, this, this was pretty inexpensive, this paint I used. I just put it in my little cup. I'm dipping out of that because it's easier than putting that all over the canvas. It's uh, acrylic tube paints, you know, and I've got other tubes with me just in case. Oh, look what happened. So here's what I'm going to do. That big streak I'm just going to turn into a shadow. We're going to go black to brown like this, and we can just create a shadow. In it. And then I'll put a little bit of yellow. So where I come into the light, I want to move a little more toward the yellow part of the spectrum, like this. Now I'm going to try to blend my colors. Now they don't always just, I don't always just nail it, especially not when I accidentally get a chunk of black in my brush and smear it all over. So, so what I'll do, my workflow will be, you know, smear the colors together and then start from the beginning again if it needs adjusting. So I add the color, I add the highlights. That's just my personal workflow, you know. So here I'm gonna add a little bit more of the yellow, a little bit more of the highlight in here. We got uh, the background noise, we got people moving out. Paige says she knows uh, someone who swapped out coffee for hot tea in their coffee maker. Oh, really? And, uh, <laughs> nice yeah said that it worked out worked out well for them yeah okay good good we'll have to explore the many different flavors of hot tea you know i was just thinking today 
I should invent something that has a nice, roasty, robust flavor that's not coffee. Just for this purpose. You know, there's really not another thing like coffee that has a, a roasted, smoky flavor. You know, that's probably one of the reasons I got, I got real hooked on it, because I just really liked that. I really liked that kind of flavor. Okay, so now I'm going back to my brown. So see how I adjusted that? So I do things over all the time. I end up having to do things over again quite often. And so understanding the principle that causes it to, to look the way I want it to look serves me well. So that yellow looks strange right there, but it won't look strange as soon as I do this. Because that takes out the intensity of the yellow and leaves just enough behind to look like a natural gradient reflective clump of hair coming down like that so we've got that and you know if i wanted to take time and really dial in this hair then i would use this method and just slow down and really try to get the details just right get it nice and even everywhere but we want to move on to fur so we've given this a good look and i think that we can probably move toward doing fur how are we doing in the chat well, you know, going gonzo keto diet is frustrated that his painting chops are not anywhere near his drawing uh, char or charcoal drawing chops. I have trouble uh, making okay. the transition into yeah. paints. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Color theory and, is a big deal. So when you don't like the look, sorry, did I interrupt? Was it no, no, no. That's good. Color theory. Big deal. So colors, once you add color, it can either send a wrong message or a right message according to what your goals are. It can it can say what you're not wanting to say, or and meaning that colors actually uh, give us a lot of information about what things are. And so when there is no color, you just use the information you've got. But you know when you watch a black and white film, it's it's quite a different experience when when you see it in color. You know, it, it really is a lot of, of new information. And so you handle it that way. Okay, there's new information. I don't want to mishandle the information and cause it to send the wrong message. So the reason I make so many videos on this subject is because I, I found the same thing to be the case. I was very frustrated. Uh, with with my performance as a painter coming from drawing same thing came from drawing wanted to paint for a living and it was it was just very frustrating trying to get lifelike uh, light and shadow on things so so I'm very long-winded I'm explaining it too much as I paint but the problem is you're adding information whether you like it or not when you put color in there you can't just put any old color and just Make sure that the light, lightness and darkness are what you would have done with a pencil and have it do exactly what you're wanting it to do. So that's why I talk about, you know, we have this rule for translucency. We have another rule for reflection. We have these patterns that we can use. Okay, so there's some, there's some generic blonde hair. We don't need to keep Aaron it. is curious if you ever sculpt with clay. <laughs> I, I, I've had some fun just doing it for personal projects. I sculpted a, a gorilla skull for my, it's on the, I think it's on the Mural Joe Instagram. You know, I, I did a gorilla <laughs> it is, skull. It is. Yeah, okay. I did that with a, for With a snake son's crawling son. through its yeah. eye sockets. <laughs> yeah. That was for my son. He has a, he has a python for a pet. And so he wanted something cool in there. He wanted to do a human skull. And I, I said, well... How about it was my idea to do a gorilla skull instead, you know, kind of King Kongish kind of a feel. So I've done a little bit of sculpting, not much. Okay. What uh, what colors would you use for brown hair? Jill is asking. Well, this is starting to look a little more brown than blonde, if you ask me. So yeah. what I would do is a it's the same pattern you pick the colors so i just wanted to demonstrate that i can keep making this 
more complex doing different clumps of hair wherever i'm not a hairstylist you know i'm starting to make it look like my hair if my hair were long <laughs> but but i would just use darker colors i i would just go to not as bright of a highlight but the color changes would be the same so i guess we might as well do a quick little sample brown here let's make it darker and instead of just going to a yellow because blonde blonde is not not quite as close to the orange to the red orange rusty color as browns so i'm going to use a little more red to turn this into a brown so we're going to go brown and black to get our our dark colors like this okay now i'm going to try to stay off of that white it makes the hair gray now instead of just yellow let's go that uh, red oxide and yellow let's do an orange for the highlight okay here we go not as how do you as how do you do uh how do you do a translucent look painting with squirrels is curious about the rules that you might use yeah, for okay yeah that's exactly what i'm doing now by by moving the color toward yellow on the spectrum as it gets lighter and so i'm just doing it not as bright for the brown it's it's really the the same color pattern just not quite as bright so i'll use some of the that dark orange red in there i'll add some of this yellow in the end it's orange you know orange on a real dark brown and then i just won't go as extreme perhaps when i do the when i do this hut here so now when i go like this see that red looks kind of out of place there but then when i take this white and put it in there and create this this highlight we are going to do fur i said let's do fur and light color <laughs> okay so do you see how as i do this i'm just getting it lighter lighter until it resembles brown hair instead of blonde like this and just really watching the watching the direction of my strokes so that i can get those to look like flowing hair you know i don't want to lose that look of the flowing strands of hair so not as much yellow blonde has a bit more yellow in it brown a bit more orange but the patterns are the same so now i have hair that looks more brown down here and of course i can get darker and darker like we did last week okay so translucency we're going to do fur there's the rule of translucency is that as things get brighter they also change their color so whenever i'm doing a wave whenever i'm doing a leaf whenever i'm doing many things if i were doing this cup then I would want to implement this principle of translucency. So if I have a if I have a blue, it gets greener. Do I even have a blue? If I had a blue, quick color theory lesson here. Translucency in a blue is going to be accomplished. Let's make a blue ball. Okay. Now blue, phthalo blue already turns toward yellow by getting more turquoise it's getting a little more green but if i really want to enhance that if i really want this to look like it has light coming out of it and not just bouncing off of it all we need to do is put a tiny bit of yellow just a tiny bit we're going to make this a bit more green where it's brighter and then where i put that we're going to do this so it's not always just adding yellow okay now we're making a blue marble Right here this is how you do it so this color needs to look a little bit more green just slightly than the rest and to the extent that it changes color that that is the extent that i'm controlling that it looks translucent so if i really make it change you a lot then it really looks like light is going through it not just bouncing off of it and if i go too extreme starts to look like maybe it's filled with green goo or something okay now let's put a little reflection on top of it to top it off and let's not shift the hue let's go the other way blue instead of going toward the yellow we'll go blue toward the purple so if i just take some of this color right here my favorite color i love that it's not actually my favorite color it's just so awesome in painting okay this is some magenta we're going to do that 
add plenty of that in there so we no longer have the turquoise color. See how that kind of has a more, and you know, you'll, you'll find if you're into uh, art programs on the computer, then you'll find that when you lighten the color blue, it is disappointingly purple. And when you're used to paint, you're like, what? That's not what I wanted. Okay, so the reflection moved one direction. The light coming out of it moved the other direction. So I'm going to do the same thing with hair. I'm going to do the same thing with fur. I used a color not related to the hair, so you can see it's a pattern, and it's not just a set of colors for one thing. Okay, so let's say that we want to do an animal that has... Didn't someone mention a color of fur already? Am I wrong about that, Ben? Uh, like, colors like brown, are... squirrely, brown, squirrely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah a squirrel yeah. would be great for sure. Let's do some squirrel. Let's paint brown. a squirrel. Let's just paint a squirrel. Let's do a squirrel, uh, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah we're we'll talking about squirrels today. Yeah. Uh, I put a squirrel on the shoulder of the uh, of the girl. You know that. Well, let me let, let me ask you this: If huh. uh, I told you that I'm painting with squirrels, are you going to envision me holding onto a squirrel and? Pushing it up against a canvas, or <laughs> there's a squirrel. Are you going? Nice. Ben's got a squirrel right behind him as he's talking about that. So I thought he was or, like making a joke. <laughs> well, I, no. I, well, we got somebody in the class today whose name is painting with squirrels, and we're yeah. trying to figure out if it's okay. Uh, they're holding on to a squirrel, dipping it in paint, and smearing it on a canvas. Oh yeah, like Bob Ross. Bob Ross had his yeah. little squirrel. That was cool. Okay. Well, let's just do it because we're here to paint fur. Let's okay, so, so the way I would do it, let's put a little squirrel on the shoulder. I'm just going to start with the base coat. Uh, we got to get some of this blue out of here. That's really going to interfere with my plans. Okay, we're going to put a base coat. And let's put a little head of the squirrel right here. And we'll add a little bit of black. So make sure you tell me if my hands get in the way and you don't see the, the technique I'm using here. Just let me know. Okay, so a squirrel has this kind of a shaped head like this, and then the body goes like this, and then it goes down and go like this. Let's go a little bit bigger. Back, back goes right here, then comes down here, and then we're going to have this little, we're going to do a real, real fast, simple one. We're not going to do anything too, too fancy. Yeah, you mind punching us over here to your over the shoulder cam and... Oh, whoops, go. wrong camera. <laughs> My bad. I switched it. I switched it and then went back to the wrong one. Okay. We're gonna do a head right here. So now I'm starting to... So what I did was I started building the shape of my squirrel with black and brown. And, and what I'm doing is using the black as just my darkest shadow. It's like sculpting. I'm just thinking, okay, how can I get my three-dimensional shape first so that I can decide where I want to have my my other colors that have these effects like translucency. So here is the little arm and elbow coming down, maybe up to the mouth if the squirrel is munching on a snack right here, a little hand. So we're just doing brown, it's messy. So th this is maybe a good demonstration for what's his name that was just saying moving from drawing to painting is has has these real challenges. Well, I want to show what a messy job I can do with the squirrel and still have it resemble a squirrel by just getting the colors to be believable. And then imagination fills it in because we use colors so much to understand what we're seeing. So we're gonna go like this, tail goes up like this. And of course my background colors are mixing with it. Oh, well, what are you gonna do? Okay, we're gonna go like this. What color is a squirrel's tail? It, does it kind of get grayish? Does it get lighter? It might have been a good thing to look at. Well, I went and doing a fur demonstration. Okay, let's go like this. And okay, so now we've got color on there. So wherever I want lighter highlights, now I got to do something about that blue right there. So what I'll do whenever you have a color that is not what you're trying to get you can add opposites to it so if i add this killing a color with an opposite this is just just a little tip because it's happening to me killing it with an opposite you're actually turning the color into a color that you need if it's possible you know if if the color you need is 
you know, if I needed like a neon color, it's not going to work. But I can actually use this bright red orange and just make it mix with that blue. And then it becomes the brown that I want. So I actually use the blue instead of fight it. I was just watching a video where Bruce Lee is like, become the water. You know, you just use it like jujitsu. You use it. Use its attributes for your own purposes. Okay, so now I'm going to take some yellow and start making some brighter spots. So wherever the fur is lighter, I want to see more uh, gold color. I want to see it move toward the yellow. That doesn't mean it becomes yellow. It just means... Dude, that's my favorite thing Bruce Lee said, you know? <laughs> you like water. Yeah, you like water. When you put... When you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. Yeah, it's good. It is a great picture. Water can flow or it can crash. Yeah. Be water, my friend. When when someone is so phenomenally able at something, just superhuman abilities, it causes it causes you to really listen to what they're saying. You're like, well, they're on to something. Like, I don't know anybody else that can play ping pong with nunchucks like that i actually did yeah. see somebody doing it and i was like hey good job not as good as bruce lee but i was impressed anyway ping pong with nunchucks yeah yeah they were doing it competing with someone that had a paddle so now no. i'm adding the white and i'm just using little brush strokes in the direction of the fur and i'm i'm gonna go ahead and make them pretty even you know instead of a lot of clumps because I just, you know, I, I just don't think that squirrels have extra clumpy fur. So do you see this gray? So this is a good, this is a good thing to show. See how it's getting very gray? Now, if it's a real gray squirrel, that's fine. But I want to see more color in these to start with. Because I don't want all that gray in between my highlight and my shadow. I want to make sure that it moves to color. Because... When it comes to translucent, oh, that's that's what I should have done. I should have demonstrated what a shadow on a translucent object shows us. Well, maybe we'll get to that. Okay, so I added that hue shift. Now I'm putting this on. Let's go put a little a little reflection right here across the back, like that. Let's put a little bit right here on the arm. Maybe there's a bit of a shoulder showing. I don't know. A little bit here, maybe a little bit here. Like this. And you know, then maybe we've got a little a little eye down here. Let's put a black eye. Uh, we don't want the cute little squirrel to have a black eye. Okay, and then we're gonna put maybe a a pinkish nose you know just the simplest thing ever just so we can see the principle working all right there's a nose and now I'm just gonna go over these a couple times to try to smooth it out you know make sure my brush is dry like this and then like that that might have been too much here let's do another another pass at it go this way we get a chance we could uh flip that camera over to manual focus too it's uh oh sorry. hunting hunting focus quite a bit there oh is it my bad okay let's go like this so do you see how this squirrel is still looking a little bit grayish where the see these these gray but i think i've got enough in there for it to work but that's what I want to look out for is when I have so much gray in between. So when I lose color, and that's what paint does, it loses color in between light and shadow. And so when you lose color in between light and shadow, you lose translucency. And so you want that look of translucency by having the color on the edges of the shadows. All right, we're going to put some white, white fur on the belly like this then we're going to put a little bit of white fur here so what makes this look like fur and not just like a dark brown skinned little critter it is because i will and you know that's something that i'm 
that's something that I'm wrestling with right now since I did all of that blue on there is the combination of a little bit of texture with with the influence of the colors where the brown actually shifts toward the orange as it gets brighter so here where I have an overly gray color that is where the the shadow is getting illum you know the otherwise dark colors are getting illuminated so I need to make sure that as they get illuminated they have that effect of shifting toward yellow and having lots of color and so this is how I'm going to try to try to repair that that kind of dead dead look that it has so now I put the white on top of that let's just do a little little strokes in that direction over the back of our little squirrely and then we'll do it over the arm so snow on fire says uh please thank joe for me last night i finally accomplished waves using his video it took me a hey, long time right. and a lot of practice so i'm so happy thank you young man all right You're very sweet. talented sweet that's nice all young right i man. appreciate that and man thank you for calling me young yeah i'm right in that middle ground right in that middle ground between young young and old in human terms <laughs> Yeah, you know, we're always young to somebody, always old to somebody. So I want to I want to emphasize that I'm not just toying with this until it looks like a squirrel. I'm going to the gray areas that are on the edges of the shadows and restoring color where the color was lost when I added the white. So here's a shadow that was pretty gray and I just restored uh brown into it and I just keep doing that until it starts looking colorful enough. And so then we go like this on the other side. Let's do more of that red. So when you get the zombie look on skin tone or on fur, the zombie look is from the loss of color when light and shadow mix with each other. Now, I think that one very important thing is missing from my little squirrely here. And that is ears. But let uh -oh. me put the... Uh, let me put the colors on this leg too. Let's get the form, help it come together. So see how I'm going real, real saturated on the color. It mixes into that brown. And then I can put a little bit of highlight on it. Let's borrow some of this. Put that right here. And I'm just doing a whole lot of guesswork on the anatomy of the squirrel. You know, I'm not an expert on squirrels. It's just my best attempt from just memory you know but you know my neighbor trained a squirrel to come up and eat peanuts out of her hand so now i got a squirrel that comes up on my porch all the time nice. and rips up all of my flowers trying to find peanuts <laughs> and i can't decide whether or not i'm fascinated yeah. and in love with this squirrel for not being afraid of me and just walking up to me like where are my peanuts yeah or i'm like <laughs> frustrated at the blurring of the line between civilization and wildlife and yeah how, how my civilized front porch is being turned into a wildlife yeah sanctuary that's, that's how it goes that's and, it you know squirrels are yeah, we're gonna go like this squirrels are fancy little things man they yeah all right when one of them sits up on its back legs and holds his little arms up and looks at you man yeah there are a few joys like that yeah and then they the problem is that they just have the look that gets them all of the the cuteness points in the world but they don't give you nothing <laughs> they are not interested in your well-being not yeah. as far as i can tell if you were a nut they'd sink their teeth into you <laughs> all right you can go like this and then I'm just going to put my last little bits of highlight color on top of those ears. And um, I, don't, I don't know, maybe this has a little bit of white there. Oh, look, he's got those, he's got those long ears that go up. Let's go like this, blend it in with that brown because I don't want it to be so yellow. And then the tail. Okay, <clears throat> maybe I can do a better job on the tail. So let's go brown 
and we're going to put yellow in here like this. Okay. Sometimes, you know, maybe it's easier to work from the highlight to the shadow, depending on the colors you're working with. Okay. So now I'm going to take white and I'm just going to start making strokes toward the shadow, wherever I have that, wherever I have that brighter yellower color. I'm just going to start pulling these brush strokes into that. And look how quickly that resembles a fur, even though my, my shape technique is really not great. Okay, I'll go like this. And another way to approach this is, let's say you have a lot of light color. Let's put a lot of light color right up here on the top. So fur can be real complex. It might have one color on the outside, another color on the inside. And so sometimes it might be easier to work from the outside in. We're just going to have to let that squirrel have a blue spot. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of my more gold color here. So I'll do the yellow and a bit of red, maybe a tiny bit of brown. We don't want it to be too intense. That's what kind good. of a red are you using there? They're curious. That is the same thing I'm using all the time, a red oxide. It's like the color of rust. And I could just use primary red, but red oxide's a bit more brown, so it's, so it's a little less work for me to mix it to a brown color. Okay, so now I want to add some some little shadows. I'm going to make these going out toward the direction that the hair is growing. So I just make little little shadows. And what happens when I stroke out over wet paint is it creates little gradients where it gets lighter, lighter, lighter. This would probably be better demonstrated on a larger surface. Yeah, you know, Leanne was recognizing how you're not doing a lot of blending which seems to keep the texture. Yeah, there's a lot of texture there, yeah. Okay, and then if I want to get darker in these, I'm going to put it in those little shadow areas like that. And what that does is, is it will give me the look. Now I'm just going to go over it a few times like this to soften it. But that pattern that it creates causes color in the shadows and that's very much needed for the look of fur and then you can use whatever kind of techniques you want to to really dial in you know let's let's water the white down and i don't know maybe if we do that we can do real light strokes get kind of a a few real light light hairs coming over the top without destroying the radiance that i've created so it's when you have well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop just saying that over and over and actually demonstrate it. So let's do a little bit larger animal now. I think that would be fun. Do something. What kind of animal? Any votes on uh, something that I can actually accomplish? <laughs> mm. just... Well, what kind of animals do you have, you know? Yeah, right. Or uh, are you familiar with? You know, you got uh, yeah. you got coyotes up there. You got uh, yeah. We got a lot of animals. Elk and deer. Yes, but whatever I choose, I'm going to do it badly. I'm going to do it wrong. I'm remembering parts is a hard thing to do. Fox. Yeah. One person says a dog. Yeah. Um, Here now. We're ostrich, in. cat. What else? You guys got a lion. There we go. I mean, it kind of falls under cat. Look, that Cash. gradient worked good. That gradient a was white lion. We're successful right there. Okay, there. Now we've got the essence of a squirrel on a shoulder. I've definitely done better work, but we the the key to the fur is is that kind of gradient. Okay, so gradients are really powerful, and so I want to show you some places that gradients occur in in translucent things so so to better understand what we're doing here if you were to shine a light on skin then you would have a a well it's easier just to go over here so this is going to seem like ruining this picture now this is for the sake of doing fur better i'm not getting off topic here so 
it can seem like ruining this picture when I just come in here and put red going across like this. Let's add a little bit of yellow. We're going to try to get a real deep red orange. That is the kind of color I would expect to see on the edge of a shadow. Now I'm going to put a shadow right here. This, this whole side of the head, I'm going to put in a shadow like this. I'll even put a little bit of black on there. And if I can just get this to actually resemble a shadow, then I haven't ruined my picture. I've actually added something interesting to it. Then I'll put a dark shadow here where the where the uh, eyebrow is because that's that goes under. So that needs to be darker. I'll preserve that. I'm going to take this and put it here. So look at this gradient that is right here on the edge of that shadow. This is what translucency does. And that's why we have colors in the transitions because when we see a hard shadow, you know, when it when it's light is coming from one single direction, that's when you get that look of a hard shadow. And so I'll just take this and go like that. That little bit of color on that edge makes some color come from beneath the surface because it's on that edge of the shadow. So that's why I'm especially paying attention to the colors that are between the shadow and the highlight when I'm doing my fur. So then I want to make everything else follow suit. You know, it's going to it's definitely going to look weird if the context is wrong. So the eye might need to be a little darker. You know, you want to you want to stage things well. So we we want to darken this as well. And do that, you know. And this is a really starting to look like a scary person here, isn't it? Let's go like that. Okay, so that's the way we do colored shadow. That painting is so awful. <laughs> that's how we do hard shadows. Here, wait, maybe it'll look more like a shadow. You know what I did? I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to uh, address this. I put too much color in the rest of the shadow. And so if I put a little bit of light here, I can rescue it probably. Let's go like that, go like that. And then let's take a brighter. See, that's less colorful. And so it looks like a surface shadow more the more I do that. And then I'll take this, lighten it, and change that bright edge that's on it as well. So we'll go like this, get here, like this. And then that quickly turns into this much less darker saturated color and this is how we create shadows on translucent things okay so i know that that's i know that that's ugly but i want to demonstrate that so that i can move over to doing fur and you want so, to take a second and look at some oh, yeah, furry look at somebody's thing yeah, some furry things <laughs> let's check it out i always get going and then i forget yeah, check it out we got this here furry dog from nancy all right let's see it no and what am i doing what am i even bothering painting for let's just look at nancy's paintings come on man nancy oh, clut out there doing this cute little dog <laughs> you're making my work look so bad good job fantastic work we so, get inspired here, you know. Hey, you inspire them; they inspire you. It's We're perfect. It's perfect. So I'll use yours. Yours is a better illustration than mine of all that color between. So there's no color in the black, and your darkest browns are not as colorful as the browns in between. Excellent pattern uh, for creating that trans, the unique translucent look of brown fur. So good job. That's a good demonstration of the concept. Awesome. And then we've got uh, we got another one over here. This one here is a horse coming oh. into being. This was uh, painted from a photo. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. That uh, so that yeah. So black is something to talk Donna's, about. Donna's Donna's brother Philip Angel painted yeah. this one. Awesome. I love that. That's that is really good. So the gradients are all you have. When you're working with black and there's no color in between, 
you just want the blackest, most opaque look. It's not translucent looking anymore when you don't have color. And so that, that really dark black look is achieved really just by dialing in the gradients. So this is well done. Very good technical job on the gradients, the blending between the light and the shadow. And that's how you would handle it with pencil. And that's why it's frustrating for a pencil artist to introduce colors and then the colors just blow it all apart, you know. And then we've got this one here. Uh, you know, there was some talk about maybe like a feathery kind of a thing instead of a furry kind of a thing. Oh, so good idea. Yeah. Cool. Maybe uh, we can get inspired. Oh, nice. I like that. Very cool. Parrot action over here from. Uh, who sent nice. this over here? I like that. Who's sending yeah. parrot stuff to us? Well, whatever you do, just remember that color pattern is what will create translucency. And you know, Hazel, that's Hazel awesome over there. Missing. Hazel over there in New Zealand is painting these parrots. Beautiful parrot. I like that. That's one of those really, really giant ones, it looks like. I love it. Is that? Is yeah, that and uh, if you guys have anything else you want us to have a look at, send it to info at muraljoe.com. Yeah, do that for sure. Okay. So we're going to move over and do some fur. Okay, so with that in mind, with that in mind, we've got our ugly shadow on this portrait, but try to see through my, my uh, very loose, rough work and see that it, the effect is accomplished. That's what we want is to be able to do the effect so that when you're taking the time to do nicer, clean strokes, you understand what accomplishes that effect. So we get translucency when we put color in, and then even more so when we make that color shift. A little bit so if i'm doing fur uh let's do let's just do some kind of a a let's do like a another brown object let's just make a big section of it here let's do like this and so again if i'm working bigger then I can give myself a little bit more room. Let's say this is the back of like a bear, you know, some some animal that's that's got a lot of clumps of fur. And so we've got a lot more freedom here. And so what I'm going to do is just put my next color stage in. And so that's going to be a mix of yellow and red. It's going to be an orange. I'm just going to put orange in here like this maybe we'll go this way and get these get these clumps in here let's go heavier on the paint so that i can so that i can work quick like this we're putting lots of those in here right there right there just wherever wherever i put these i i'm just giving myself places to put my highlights so i don't need to be so particular about the exact right shape it does pay off, you know, if you have time to be particular and, and really dial in the flow of the shapes, then that's great. But I'm just going to accomplish it with very loose technique here. And get my two stages. So this is kind of like working from shadow to mid-tone to highlight at this point. Just one way of doing it. Okay, now I'm going to get white. And I don't want I don't want white on it, so I'm just gonna pre-mix that white with some yellow. Let's get a color maybe like this. Let's mix some of the brown and white, not quite as intense. So adding a brown and white will make it less intense. There we go. There's a light color. Let's go like that. Maybe a little more yellow. Like this, and then we'll go anywhere I have that color. That's where I'm gonna add my highlight like this like this right here here's some and then after i have these colors in place this is just one way to handle this but after i have these in place i'll just run over it real quick with the brush to get the to get the uh the grain texture that i'm after to make it look like a more more furry texture you know to get all the lines so maybe we can just take a bigger brush you see that brush right there? Hey, i can reach it i can reach it i got this bigger brush sometimes this can work in your favor get a bigger brush 
like that. And all my colors are still kind of wet, so they're going to run together and they'll actually help. Uh, they'll help each other by mixing, you know, because I don't want the colors so separate. You know, me, especially when I'm working just from primaries, you don't have to do that. You can pre-mix them. So I get that. I get that grainy texture now, and then I can keep enhancing it. I can keep going here and say, you now it looks like I have a little bit there. Let's put some here. Anywhere I have the light. So I really, I, in order to get this effect, I am really focusing on putting it where I've set myself up for it by, by going to the areas that are already having more color so that it looks like hair. It has that very soft look of hair coming out of shadows okay then i can take a different approach and i can put the light color on first so we can try that too see see which one works better let's do that maybe we should just paint something like a dog you know just something simple something that's real familiar so Paige is asking uh when you're or she's hoping that your transition to your new studio isn't going to take too long. Um, so this might be a good time to inject that, you know, Actually, your guys' support yeah. is what makes this happen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right, so right. that's, a, that's uh, we're, out here, we're, we're out here, some starving artists trying to make this happen and, and share, yes, share this good time with true. you guys. So, uh, you know, thank you for your support and everything that you guys have done to uh, keep Joe on air here and uh, yeah, still sure. painting for you guys. So as long as you're still here and, and still in support of that, we'll keep bringing it to you. Thank you. Thank you. Good good job saying that, Ben. Uh, yeah, I don't actually have a space yet. So these live shows are on hold after this episode. They're on hold for a little while. Now, what I'm going to do is take a – I'm going to add shadows now. And I'm going to do it the same way I did that little squirrel tail, black and brown. And we're just going to go wherever I already have shadows. This is a good place to put this darkest little bit. Right in there, maybe some in here. Now this is really clumpy. Now I'm getting the three-dimensional clumpy look. But I'm careful to put these where I already have those dark brown colors. And then if I can, I want to continue the pattern of soft gradients that blend out too, because that really helps a lot. You know, being just like that, that horse looked so beautiful without even using any color. So having very gradual changes really goes a long way. So see how those that creates deep, deep spots because the color is in line with the other colors it it's not interpreted as something other than deep deep shadows you don't see it as dark objects it doesn't look like a bunch of dark bugs crawling on it or some other thing you immediately perceive it as a shadow just because it, the color is in in that kind of a relationship so that's what we want you know i have to do a you know it would be a fun thing to do i actually have to do a mural of a yeti Soon. You want to paint a big Yeti face? That might be fun. I mean, someone did say it's got Sasquatch. Yeah, okay, we're going to do a Yeti. All right. So so this is good because now we can do do this same effect with, with hardly any color at all. And so let's take white. We want a lot of white. Maybe I'll... Yeah, let's, let's do this. Let's do lots of white. So it's going to have cheeks on here and, you know, like, you know, I'm thinking it has, I get to make it up somewhat because we don't really know exactly. Maybe someone out there does know what a Yeti looks like. What does a Yeti look like? Man, I would love to know what a Yeti looks like. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm going to give it nice, big whisker hairs. You know, this is going to be like it's, uh, like it's beard. I'm making the beard right here. So right away, just by putting wet on wet, I get these strokes. But I can make this look and feel more like white fur by really uh, controlling what kind of colors I have here. 
So I'm just going to put gray shadows so that this really looks white. And let's put heavy white paint so that we can really get a bright white look. And we'll go almost colorless. We'll do black and white. But wherever we have the black, I'm just going to put a blob of black right here so I can keep using it. So I'm going to just put little spots of black. We're going to put stripes like this. And we're going to start with, with this kind of colorless look. And you'll see that when I do that, it, it's okay. You know, it's okay. But when you're doing the color white, there's actually a little bit of color in the shadows, even, even with white. So really, I think black is the only black is the only color that doesn't have the hue shifting going on if it's like a true black you know and so let's do a bunch of brush strokes we're just getting the variation between black see how that see how the translucency is starting to disappear with this pattern of just black and white i'm going to create shadows down here like this shadows down here we'll put this white over that get a darker gray near the base okay okay i'm liking what i'm seeing I'm liking this because i can demonstrate how i have lost a pretty good amount of translucency with this very gray uh <clears throat> color scheme that has little color between light and shadow okay so now here's what i want to do i want to just bring back a tiny bit of color not a lot of color yellow brown and orange is a great color to add to black tiny bit of it and so now i'm going to add just black and white to this i don't want an extreme color it's just a little bit i want to show you how subtle this is this is going to be the the color that i'll add in between light and shadow in order to get or or i can just make all the shadows this color i don't have to have dark shadows so depending on how dark your shadows are or how far you go with the shadow you might not get to the part of the shadow where it gets so dark that it loses color you might have color in all of your shadow it's up to you okay so see how when i put this on it it looks distinctly different than this bluer shade of gray so i'm going to put this everywhere i see that gray and specifically I'm going to put it in between any areas that have black next to white so I'm just looking for every single gray spot anywhere I see a gray spot I'm putting this watch how it will start looking deeper as I progress with this color watch watch how it becomes not as two-dimensional of a texture when I add this color in there I'm going to put this in between anywhere I see that black Let's get a little bit more of the color, brown, touch of yellow. Then we're gonna do the black and white in there, like this. Put some in here, just a little bit in between. So this was a great discovery for me, a very helpful discovery is what I mean by great. Like I was very excited about what it meant for my work, you know, because I wanted the look of deep translucent fur even if i wanted to make it a light color like white and i i was trying to figure out why highlights and shadows were looking dead and and uh opaque like just like the paint that i was using and so the reason was because of this you just need a tiny bit so a colorless you know how i said things will shift toward yellow Uh, how are we doing out there, Ben? Well, you know, I was just telling somebody that you're no longer on Patreon. Um, oh, oh, thank and, you. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> yeah. Just want to yeah. make sure you're still connected. It got quiet, and I was like, I wonder if we just... Well, you know, you're you're doing uh, good work here, and people are appreciating it. One person says it looks like Hippie Santa is coming out. Hey. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, there's some hope that an abominable snowman might show yeah. up. Oh, yeah. That's what it's going to be for sure. This is a Yeti. Yeah. Is yeah. A Yeti. Um, so now what I'm do you think gonna... is what do you think is the best way for people to support you? Uh, well, I, 
either buy it buy a download because it's just a digital it's just a, a a digital good so you don't have to download it you can just go and subscribe on my website and you can do that you can the cancellation i made really obvious really really easy because i hate things that rope you in uh and you know i i just can't stand those so when you go to my site the change change your account status is the very first thing on the page and so uh, you can really support me by subscribing for any amount of your choosing you can subscribe for one month and then unsubscribe i always appreciate that and you can also just purchase a download i love for people to purchase my videos it makes me feel like somebody wants wants what i'm doing you know it encourages me emotionally as well as financially <laughs> So we have a uh, we have a uh, healthy participation with people sending stuff in today. You want to have? Hey, a all right, yeah. Let's look at some more. Let's take a let's take a breath here and take a look at your work out there. Okay. So uh, our buddy out there, Epitome Hawk, has uh, this this piece that uh, she's working on. Oh, I remember this one. Nice color. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. So nice the, hair is, the hair is timely, you know, like. Uh, she's okay. Very for, good. Very good. Thoughts yeah. On the hair. That is coming along. Nice. Looks better uh, than when we, we saw this last week. I remember. Great work. And so I am definitely starting to see the colors, the, the skin tone equally as important, if not more. Well, I think equal to the hair. You know, skin is also translucent. So good job getting color on the edges of the shadows. That's where we want the color on the edges of those shadows. And you're really, you're really getting it. That is coming along. And so I'm going to point out some areas where I don't see it. And perhaps that'll help you on your way a little. I don't see color on the edge of this shadow. So this starts to feel uh, a little bit more like a foreign object in the painting rather than rather than the continuation of the skin going but i i understand this is not completed so don't don't uh, take this as criticism but just just trying to leave helpful comments so nice job anywhere you have a shadow look at the edge of it and see if you can add color i i am i am proud to see that coming along nice work Very this one good. is from uh daniel hastings he's got some uh, hair of his own he's working on here he says he's going to send this even before you guys started talking about squirrels <laughs> nice oh i like that you know that's like squirrel cool. people it's like this is in, there's like a little uh, that little makes me imagine the the side. okay sweet that's cool nice i like i like all the atmosphere and depth you got in what looks like just watercolor you know the medium has outlines and different styles than uh what what I do and you you still have good depth and atmosphere your atmosphere has the look of translucency for the exact same reason that the hair does and so yeah I mean that that squirrel will come come right to life if you just employ that same color pattern principle same kind of color pattern you've got in this glow right here you know you go from your less colorful darkest your your most colorful edge of the shadow to a gradient to the bright light and you can do that at any color, any scale. Nice work. I like that. So cool picture. Our uh, buddy Chris Milligan is out there painting horses and says, uh, thanks again for another live stream. Since hey, you just got some hair and fur, I thought this painting would be appropriate. Yeah, yeah that's know awesome. Your thoughts. Awesome. Uh, wait, this painting, that's a painting, really? I guess. Really? That's what he says. Really? Well... Looks I mean, like it looks a, like a photograph, yeah, right? Yeah, it looks like a photograph to me. It looks amazing. Amazing. All right. Uh, so well, if that is a painting, awesome, awesome technical work there. But once again, uh, what a beautiful example of the black being the exception to this because you don't have color to add. So then it's that much more important to manipulate what you do have, and that is texture. And so this, this uh, manipulates gradients and texture in order to get the look of the fur. So we don't want to throw that out while we're talking about the color principles. So nice. here's one. Thanks uh, for sharing that. Here's one that's, uh, you know, also maybe a painting, maybe a photograph. Okay. <laughs> Which one is it? This one here Let's is. See. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay, right. Definitely a photo. 
yeah, yeah right. I've seen that guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, he's. Uh, I stepped outside while you were painting, and he's there. Yeah. Snapped this guy's shot. Yeah. Know. Oh man, that is cool. Oh, yeah. Nice expression. Yeah, this one's from Amanda Germany. She's got okay, uh, okay, cool. And night with fur coat. Is what this so is. this is what I'm doing right this moment. Nice job. You had already done it. Look at the color in this gray hair. And so it's not. This color is not made from black and white. So. So yeah, she did an excellent job with this. She did not just mix her white with her black in order to get these shadows. And so that is very well done. I like that, man, the colors are, are subtle. When you see color done nicely on a subtle uh, palette that doesn't have very much saturated bright color, it's, it's uh, you know, I really admire it. Nice job, thanks for sharing that. This one's from Monique right here. They're doing. Oh, uh, here I was moving away from my computer. What am I doing? Nah, dude, we're cruising. We got yeah, let's we got see good it. participation today. Look at this. Oh man, cool form on that handsome. Yeah, Monique jaguar. Marion. Look at that. That is beautiful. Now, is this leopard or jaguar? I'm sorry that I don't know. Mm, that is a lagwire. Oh, okay, well it's beautiful. Le I love it. Man, I'm Jag a lover of jaggered, shapes. Shapes jaggered, and lines. leopard, jaguar. <laughs> yeah, I think it's one. Yeah, it is. It is, it is sunny out here in the forest today. Yeah. Man. I got to tell you. You got bright light on your face. Hey, the sun just yeah. cut through these trees. But let's just look at uh, the picture of Ben. You know, Ben, if you go full screen for a minute, we could see. Yeah, man. Let's, let's just go full screen. We, we can see color on the edges of the shadows. Actually, we see color all through those shadows. But right here, you know, the way we know that we're looking at skin is because there's so much color on those on those stripes. It's not just a... It's not just a grayish color. Okay, you can go back. I just wanted to point right. it out in real life. Lots yeah, of color so there. <laughs> let's uh, let's let's stop and look at all the colors in yeah. real life real okay, quick, okay. and then and then uh, we'll come over here and look at this one from Lily. She just started this one. Um, and hey, all right, cool. Close. I like that. Some it's rhinos. not close to being done. They're okay. still blocking in the color, but any yeah. suggestions are appreciated. Okay, well, uh, I always love on on uh, objects that have uh, on any objects. I always love edge lighting. Edge lighting can really go a long way, like on the belly. A, and I'm talking about very subtle, nothing real, real extreme. You mix that black with a tiny bit of that green grass, and then maybe on the grayer side, just a tiny bit. Man, it'll look so good if you put a little bit of that on the on the very bottom of that black shadow. I, I love that effect. I'm not going to say anything else because that really is looking fantastic. I'd love an update as you progress. All right. We got a few more we'll look at a little bit later, everybody. Uh, so we're going to let Joe minute, do yeah. a little more paint. Well, well, we'll make this the last. Let's do this the last uh, bit of me painting. And we'll end with with everybody else out there yep. with your work. And so this... This, this is far enough, so you can see distinctly how adding this, this color in here caused my shadows to recede. They go into that texture now. They go into that fur. And so I can, I can play with this and manipulate it. Once you have that, you can do all kinds of little things on top of it as long as you don't lose it. You can even do a different color fur uh, like a lot of animals have, you know, if the outside fur is different but all you all you want is to establish that initial pattern that gives you the three-dimensional look of of the fur and the shadows okay so now this is my favorite part all right we're gonna do us we're gonna do a yeti face okay so i gotta remember same thing this is gonna be kind of like those rhinos we're gonna have relatively colorless skin so let's start with black and white let's do black and let's do the uh maybe the mouth is right in here like this and then we're going to put a little bit of color in there let's go ahead and put some some brown and just a little you know i could make it colorless that's that's not against the rules i'm just thinking that i would like the look of it with a bit of color so i'm putting that brown putting the yellow and when I get those in there, I'm going to start putting a bit of highlight right on here. This is under the nose, like this. This is that 
bright, this is the brighter light hitting the, hitting that mouth coming down. And then we're going to use shorter strokes so I can get this look that I'm after. Get some wrinkles in that upper lip. You know, give it that, that ape look where they have that big upper lip and they kind of have the wrinkles going down toward that toward that lip and then I'm going to put a highlight right here this is upper lip right here right there that's it that's the one and go like that blend it a few times blend these a few times you know you got the wrinkles in there then we'll do the lower lip right there like that and then we'll do a shadow under that lower lip so let's get a little bit of our brown black and go we'll kind of do this shape because that just seems common on lips you know you get that shape in there do this darker, darker something tells shadow. me somebody's going to emerge from that white pretty soon yeah yeah right there and then we're going to go like this we're going to add add our little bits of color because we need to go back to the white we got to we got to blend this into the beard you know we got to blend the hair into the fur so we're gonna go like that and get our white and like this like this you know it's kind of the uh yeti goatee right there okay and then we're gonna get our brighter brighter white and we're gonna go like this reflection on the lip that's what this is here a little bit here here okay now let's do a nose oh we need to do a video in the future on noses we need to do something on noses okay we're going to go like this we're going to put a a nostril we just need black uh, maybe brown first go like this like that and then we'll go here we need a nice wide nose. I'm a big fan of noses. I always, I always love a good wide nose. Just something about the shape of a nose. It has like aerodynamics. Well, they're good for breathing, you know. Yeah, nice they're good wide for that, nose. Yeah, on a more technical level. Yeah, you get solid amount of airflow. It's like looking at the hood scoop on a muscle car. You're like, that thing could get some airflow. That's it. Yeah, I like that big nose. That's a beast. Yeah, yeah, do that. Okay, and then we're going to go like this. We're going to add a little bit of color to the shadow again. So brown, a teensy, a teensy weens of, of uh, yellow. And then we're going to go like this. We're going to go circle, bright circle for the, for the nose. And then we're going to go here. You know, this is kind of fun because because the color palette is so simple, I can quickly work through these shapes without without the uh, as as much of the multitasking. Okay, nostrils like that. Just kind of curl them right over the top of those, right over the top of those, and then uh, we've got a nose right there. Okay, okay, I'm liking that. It could probably be a little more white here. Let's go. Get a little bit more of the highlight. One, two, three. There we go. Now you can see the nose a little better. Now, animal eyes, you know, we have to make sure that we put the slant because, you know, if you want something, well, you, you can do anything you want, but a pattern I've noticed is something really looks a lot more animal like when you put the animal slant on it. So we're going to go like this, and then we'll put the uh, white in here on each side like this okay like that okay then we'll do another one here let's put a little bit bigger what color should a yeti's eyes be what color should we make this uh like uh let's go with maybe like a yellowish oh that's cool i like that i was thinking yellow yeah okay here. dude all right brian way to be yeah. yellow but, it is but if i add yellow to black it has to be orange because yellow will turn green so if i want it to look like a yellow with the shadow 
I have to add this orange first, and then maybe my brightest spot can be, I don't know if you need to zoom in. I'm working pretty tiny yeah. to do it. We'll Looks go. good, man. Looks good. Like this, we put the orange first, and then that allows us to put the yellow. So now we can take this yellow and just go full force with the yellow like that. And then we have a nice lifelike shadow on the eye as well as the yellow color. Now I, I did a little too much mixing. Look, I, I ruined it as fast as I made it. Let's let's go again. Let's put the orange like that. Get a little bit more of that right there. And then get the yellow again. You know, I'm piling up the paint more and more. There we go. Yellow, you know, it can be a very frustrating color to work with because, because it typically does not cover very well at all. And it keeps turning green. Yeah, it turns green. Yeah, when it hits dark colors, it turns green. So that's why that's why that orange first. That is the key right there is use an orange, not a yellow. Okay, and if you put a shadow on yellow, a, a shadow for yellow is brown, not black. Okay, so let's put another eye like this. Put the whites of the eye in there. And we're just adding white to this black. And then we'll put the little bit of orange in there. And then we'll put the yellow on top of the orange. There we go. That's pretty good. Pretty good yellow. Let's put just a teen, teeny bit of reflection in each eye. This is my favorite part is doing a little one of these. A teensy weensy. Yeah, yeah. A little one of those in each eye goes a long way. And then maybe the maybe the whites of the eyes could use a little bit of a boost. I don't want to use white on the whites of the eyes. If you do that, you can't do believable reflections. So remember, the whites of the eyes are not white in a picture. I mean, you can. There, there, I'm sure there, there's exceptions to everything. And if I say something conclusively, then someone will find an exception. But if for all practical purposes, just keep it some, some shade of gray. Okay, now I'm going to do the... Uh, I'm going to do the shadows of the other colors. We're going to put like a lower lower eyelid right there and go like this. Get rid of some of those black uh, mascara outlines. You know, not that there's anything wrong with a Yeti mascara. I mean, maybe it's good. <laughs> Maybe it's a cool look. I mean, you know, Yeti looked pretty good with a nice bold eye, I would say. Yeah. Well, let's do this. Let's make it kind of a natural gradient, like it occurs naturally. It's not just a solid line. It just gets it just gets more black as it goes up. So you can do so much. You know, we did uh, one, I think the first, first live stream of this series was how to paint eyes. We did how to draw eyes, then we did how to paint eyes. So I'm very carefully manipulating. So if you want to see more on the parts of the eye that I'm manipulating in order to get just the expression that I want, then that's a good, good reference, that video. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of white right in here. Like this, coming down there. Then I'll add a little bit of white in here. See how I went right up into those corners? because I really want the look of that eyelid, that lower eyelid wrapping around, and then it's going to go like this, and we're going to get that face coming down right here. I'm going to go here and get some, get some black, get some yellow. I want a skin, you know, like just kind of a off gray skin color. Let's do that. Cheekbones. We need cheekbones for expression. That really goes a long way to get a powerful yeti expression so let's put a darker shadow underneath the more colorful one okay now it's time to put some white highlights on these cheekbones this right down 
above the nostril. This 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 part of the face goes shoop, right there. And then we're going to go like this. Same thing on this side. We're going to go cheekbone. That part of the face goes right over above the nostril. Like that. And then we get gradually darker. And that's where I'm going to start putting fur on. This goes here. Like that. And then let's start putting the white fur coming off it. Just go right into that shadow because it already has color. It's probably enough. Like that. This is how you get that. That bearded, that bearded look. Let's do that. Grab some white for this side. What do you think? Decent looking Yeti? There we go. There we go. I like that. Oh, I like the bright white on the edges, like kind of like a tiger mane. Kind of go. Yeah, the mature, this. the mature parts. They gotta live a little yeah. before that part grows yeah. that way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, then we're gonna go up here and do a head. Let's do like a it doesn't look it doesn't look especially mean. You know, I kind of like the the uh relaxed. It's this is the Yeti that's in the zoo, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, this is an eyeliner wearing Yeti. I accidentally did that black. I don't know where I hit it. Yeah, this is the one that wears the eyeliner. Yeah, yeah this is a uh, relationally based yeah. Yeti. Yeah, totally. Oh, man, look what I did with that black. Yeah, you know, like maybe it's a stripe of black hair amidst yeah. all the white. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Hey, no, that's not a bad idea. The Yeti is a horn. Yeah. Yeah, what if you did yeah. want to make tufts of black hair? Not a bad idea at all. I'm well, saying, man, I'd throw doing. a tuft of black. Yeah, yeah. The skunk's got nothing on the Yeti. Okay. <laughs> yep, black fur. And, you know, if it's really black, black, I don't need to worry about colors. But let's just make a gradient. Like that there. There, just do the same thing on both sides. That's good. Okay, then we'll do black, uh, white here and then make sure our shadows again in order to get it to look like it has depth to the to the translucent fur. I just want to add my color to it. So we got brown, yellow. My brush has just destroyed this brush. I said I was going to throw it away. I didn't throw it away. I showed up without my tools is what happened. I was like, okay, maybe I'll use that brush through another, another session. Okay, we got. You know, it kind of uh, looks now like a sheep, like a yeti sheep, like a it's, oh, <laughs> like a <laughs> big, friendly, yeah, yeah, approachable, yeah. That's what it sheep. is. Big, friendly, and approachable. That's how you do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Ganja says uh, it looks like a a marmoset monkey, like uh, those little black and white. I don't know, it's like a spider monkey, maybe. Is another yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 it kind of does. Yeah, and all this time we felt like the Yeti was a big, scary thing. If I made the eyes tinier, maybe it would have that giant look, you know? Yeah, well, I heard the way you make a Yeti is by crossing a sheep and... Uh, is that... Is that... <laughs> yeah. And an ape, yeah. Right. Makes sense. Yeah, Makes sense. yeah, Mary C sees a, a Yeti llama. Yeah, a Yeti Llama. Okay, okay. Well, you know, when I make things from imagination, it's bound to be a combination of the things that I have seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Well, you got all those Yeti wandering around in Arizona. You're bound yeah, to... yeah, we got some Yeti. Yeah. You're accidentally, you're bound There's to accidentally sightings. paint a Yeti when you try to get a sheep on the canvas. Yeah, there are sightings. Okay, we need brows. It's missing the expression that the eyebrows can offer. And go like this add light to this top this is just the uh the heavy skin that's over the brow it's not the not the hair yeah and then we'll and then we'll add some we'll add some white white to the brows like that just some quick little Curved strokes, maybe even a little bit over the eye. Oh, that's kind of fun. 
like that. Okay. Well, I think we're about done. Hmm. I, I, I don't think we need to do a whole lot more to our Yeti. Maybe just finish off the middle of the face right there, and then we'll then we'll call it. Yeah, good. we're at about a half hour here, so we uh, will get to you guys' pictures here in a sec. Last chance to shoot those in to info at MuleJoe.com. This just get that nose worked out. There we go. All right. So you know it's fun knowing tricks. It's fun knowing the secret to what makes fur look like fur. So that at any ability level, you're at least not without the answer that you need. You know, it, <clears throat> I'm not I'm not taking tons of time to dial in the details just so on this picture. You know, uh mainly because I just don't have time on a live stream, and that's not really a good demonstration of what actually causes the effect, you know. But you can see the freedom it gives me to quickly throw together this, this furry anatomy because the, the colors I'm using immediately say fur. And so that's how you do it. I'm going to move over, look at the uh, computer, talk with my brother for a little bit. <laughs> this is a good uh, combo. This the two friends we got the yeti and the girl <laughs> i like it it's a shame the squirrel couldn't make it to the gathering yeah oh nice i like that oh, yeah i, I took this one out from uh, michelle she she did up this furry the furry uh, lion here. yes and and so i really like the style on that the style of brush strokes it this is what makes a painting beautiful in my opinion is when the style of the brush strokes actually adds to the mood and the feeling of the of the fur, the tufts of fur, the feeling. Nice job with that. Not to mention excellent job with the exact color patterns that we're talking about here, getting that fur to look three-dimensional. I love that. I would love to just take your painting and add a little white dot on the eyeball. <laughs> mm, let's, that? Hold on, let's look at it. Where did the little yeah. white dot go? Yeah, the little okay. white dot, the little white reflection dot. I'm yeah. obsessed with it. I just love what it does. Yeah. I'm obsessed. It's not even always in a picture. You know, you look at photos, it's not always there. Gotta but, just gotta have his white dot. Hey, uh, uh, here's it. here's one from uh from uh from uh Joanne. Okay, let's, see, it. let's see. Joanne Garcia's working on this one. Uh hey, all right, cool. This, uh, lovely portrait not, of nice. This. Yeah, woman okay. With all I this like long it. flowing hair. Yes, good job. Okay, so you've got you've got your uh you've got your two like a shadow and a mid-tone so what can really add to that hair is it doesn't have to be extreme it doesn't have to be so much lighter but one more grade lighter so that it has some reflection so right now you don't see the the look of reflection bouncing off you can see the colors that cause translucency but you could add one one lighter color a little a little bit lightened with white and and as light as you want to go and you could add that reflective look on top of the hair good job with your tones you're getting that translucent look and i like the color in your clouds clouds are the same way you get the same effect with the clouds this is quite a collection of different elements i don't even know everything i'm looking at and there you got a rose you got a um, I'm embarrassed for not knowing what if I'm supposed to know what that flag is. I'm sorry that I'm an uneducated. Nah, person. I don't know what it is either. We <laughs> yeah. could we could guess, but it could probably no. Be okay, even well. worse trouble than not knowing. Yeah, it wouldn't yeah. end well. Oh man, thank you. I for mean, the that truth picture. is, we both know exactly what that flag is. We just don't want to talk about it. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we know what it is. We it's, totally know what it is. Yeah. 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 It's good. We got to move on with the show. Yeah, okay. the show's got to go on. Hey, check this out. We got ourselves. Uh, this furry bear, which is pretty awesome. Oh, from, nice. Uh, oh, yeah. I love that big fluffy. This head. is from yeah. Charity Hagar. Beautiful. I love or it. Hagar, love Charity it. Hagar. In, uh, and so North this Carolina. this demonstrates, you know, look how colorless the highlights are on the very outer edges, the brightest spots. But then, but then those have a gradient that goes into a much more colorful mid-tone. And so you maintain, so then you get more complex hair. You have maybe the, the, the lighter, and this is oftentimes with fur, you have a, a grayer, more colorless fur on the outside, and then you have color in those shadows, or sometimes vice versa, I don't know. Nice job, 
I, I like it. I like the layers you put in remembering to put the colors in there. Nice work. And then we've got uh, cute too. Cute bears. So, yeah, since we're feeling cute, let's keep it cute and uh, check out these here uh, little hey, cute cats. I was from, just watching a movie about. I was just from, watching a movie uh, Paul about Mc, Paul McBride sends these over. Oh that's, man. Uh, that's Brutus, Callie, and Bob. Awesome. I like that. Wow, man. You're like a uh, pet portrait artist. Fantastic yeah, work. That's nice, man. Paul yeah, McBride. Yeah. We grew up, you know, Ben and I grew up with cats in the house. Yeah. Not, not I have a scar cool. on my chest from a cat that jumped off of my shoulder, uh, yeah. out of my, my chest. Yeah, yeah. I do I do love a lot of things about cats. I, I'm not sure I'm ready to have one in the house yet, but this really, these are great portraits. Well done. You really captured a beautiful expression in each one. Nice work. And then we've got uh, this one here coming in from our buddy Mary C. She's out there making it happen with some dandelions. Ooh, sweet. I like those. That's cool. Nice job on those dandelions. All right. And cool. uh, you got that. You got that. Uh, now, now you could. I'm just saying you could you could employ that same principle you could get a little bit more of that deep look same way i did with the uh, yeti fur you could do the same thing on these you know just a little bit a light color not a dark color a light color yeah cool. so she and was I considering doing them from this overhead view from like a ground level view yeah uh, kind of went back and forth but yeah uh, yeah i like the overhead view cool cool choice i like yeah it. that's how it turned out yeah neat. um so with that, uh, Joe, I leave it with you, man. All right. Well, we're going to call it a day here. Uh, I've got to get home to my uh, family, and and I've got to uh, move things out of the studio, too. i got to start the process. I was waiting until I got to do this last one. I was really looking forward to doing this last one with you all. So thanks again for being here. You can check out muraljoe.com for, for more uh, material. And I always love, my, there's a contact link on the website too. I always love hearing from people yeah, what you're doing. And I love hearing the ways that you've used my videos. Always fantastic. Thank you for all the encouragement and for joining us along for the fun. We'll see you next time. There will be a next time. You can get on the mailing list and I'll keep you posted about anything from workshops, downloads to live streams, whatever's going on in the Mural Joe world. You can see that on my website too. All right. You guys enjoy the rest of your night or day or evening or afternoon or whatever it is where you are.